Today, I wanna to ask you something quite important. It's actually a very important topic that I feel isn't discussed enough. And honestly, I think this is a pandemic all on its own with how often this happens to people or how often it happens to you maybe. And I don't think any of us realize how bad this has gotten. So I'm gonna be asking you uh, just a couple quick questions. You can feel free to go along with it. How many times a week do you drink anything that has caffeine in it? This can include an energy drink, a pre-workout drink, coffee, tea, literally anything with caffeine in it. How many times a week do you drink something with caffeine in it? What about how many times a day? Do you drink caffeine every single day? Do you drink it multiple times throughout the day? What is your daily consumption? So for me, the last four years of my life, I drank multiple energy drinks and caffeine drinks daily. Multiple daily. And for two of those four years, I had the excuse of, oh, you know, I'm working two jobs, which I was, so I'm working two jobs. I genuinely need the caffeine. I genuinely do require this extra boost. But for the other two years, I had been drinking it habitually. I had not been prioritizing actually keeping my health truly in check. I had not been actually trying to wean myself off of the caffeine. And it's been quite interesting to see the results because as of two months ago, back in April, yeah, it's coming up on two months now. So about seven weeks ago, I received some news that wanted me to change my caffeine habits. I'm not going to go into the news right now, maybe in a future video, but I wanted to change my caffeine habits. So I essentially cut cold turkey. I quit caffeine pretty much cold turkey. The only caffeine that I have now of any kind is a pre-workout. And even then I get pre-workouts that have like L-citrulline and vitamins B6 and 12 and taurine and niacin and all that. I don't get any with like any caffeine. And if it does have caffeine, it's probably 50 milligrams. So I am almost entirely off of caffeine minus my pre-workouts. These little guys right here, these are five hour energies. You can see that the tab is still sealed. This was the very last drink that I bought before I made the decision to take myself off of these. I probably honestly spent well over $5,000 on these things alone. Because I used to have one of these daily between my jobs for two years. And then after that, I just started buying them habitually. These things have 250 30 milligrams of caffeine in just this little bottle. It also has 40 milligrams of vitamin B6 and 500 micrograms of vitamin B12. Just for reference, normally for a daily function, you wouldn't even need more than 25 micrograms of vitamin B12 just for daily function, okay? So what am I getting at here? Why do I still have a bottle after two months? Why do I... Why am I making this video then? See, the thing is, is that temptation is a very fickle thing. It's always tempting to know that this bottle is right here. There could be an emergency in a day where I need it. I need it. I need it. You know, but I'm, I've made the choice that I just don't need it anymore. Because for a very long time, I personally thought that Caffeine was considered as a supplement. And it turns out that on the FDA's website up until 2018, the FDA also considered it a supplement as well. But as of 2018, the FDA updated the regulations on it and caffeine is now considered a stimulant. A stimulant is a nice word to say a drug. Now there are two types of drugs, obviously, stimulants and depressants. Okay, but they're under the umbrella category of a drug. Caffeine is a genuine drug. Why am I saying that? 
because I didn't realize that I was addicted to caffeine. I mean, like, caffeine even has genuine withdrawal symptoms. If you overconsume on caffeine like I did, and then you go through withdrawal symptoms, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But it is considered a safe drug, so that makes it totally safe, right? Yes, in very small quantities, but not at the quantities I was doing. Honestly, I was probably sipping 400 milligrams of caffeine every day, and that's pretty excessive. So then it's no wonder that even though I was still drinking all this caffeine daily, I was still having trouble sleeping on time. I was still waking up several times throughout the night. I was still feeling tired in the morning and having brain fog every morning, even though I got a proper night's sleep. Even on the nights that I got a proper sleep, I still had brain fog. I still had spacious thoughts. I just wasn't able to concentrate. But over the last month now, since I've stopped taking all the caffeine, I've slept so much better. I've gotten so much calmer. Is it just a coincidence that when I stopped overdosing, I'm <laughs> not even gonna pussy out. When I stopped overdosing on caffeine, is it any coincidence that I suddenly had such a healthy schedule when it came to my sleep, my energy levels, my daily habit routines? Has it really been a complete coincidence all the times that I had caffeine throughout my workday? I was still having brain fog. I was still spacing out not even 30 minutes after I had that caffeine. So then does the caffeine actually help you concentrate? Does it help you stay awake? Is it still a coincidence that even though you took the caffeine, even though you had the cup of coffee, the energy drink, that you still felt like taking a nap not even two hours later? It normally takes your body four to six hours to filter out something that you've taken in. So even though you don't feel the immediate effect after an hour, you don't feel the effect anymore, it's still circulating in your blood and it's still getting filtered. So even when your body is still trying to process it out, it's still, you're still taking in more caffeine when it's still in the middle of cycling caffeine throughout you. And then it becomes a negative feedback loop that just doesn't stop until you make it stop. And I'm gonna bust hard news on you. You genuinely, like if you're only working one job if you're only working on nine to five, you don't need this caffeine. You don't need the energy drink. You don't need the coffee. If you want it, that's fine. That's a choice that you can make, but you don't need it to get through your work day. Think about it this way. You're spending anywhere between three to $5 just to get tired again after an hour. Why would you do that? Why, why are you doing that to yourself? That's a question that I'm asking myself. You genuinely don't need it. You just need to make better choices. You need to make better choices on your sleep schedule, on your daily routine, on your habit building, on everything else in your life. If you feel like you need caffeine because you're constantly waking up throughout the night and you go to bed late, because the caffeine is still circulating in your blood from when you had it three hours ago and you can't sleep. And then when you do go to bed, you still end up waking up two, three hours in the middle of the night, two to three times. And you still wake up and then you have that heavy brain fog. It's a vicious cycle, it really is, just like any other drug out there. But caffeine has been my drug of choice. And as of two months ago, I had been officially cold turkeyed off of it, mine is pre-workout. And I've been great. I haven't had any issues being able to actually go to sleep on time. I haven't had any issues waking up with like heavy brain fog. So then you're asking, what can I do in replacement of caffeine? Well, there's a couple of things you could do. If you do end up having a rough night's sleep, if you go to bed late or you wake up a bit early and you have a rough night's sleep or you still woke up in the middle of the night or something, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, if you do wake up in the middle of the night and you have to use the bathroom or something, don't get on your phone. Stay off your phone, just lay back down 
in a starfish position or something and just deep breathe. Deep breaths for five to 10 minutes and you're gonna fall right back asleep like that. It's easy. It really is easy. Let's say that you're staying up with anxious thoughts because you're behind on bills or you got a project coming up or you're stressed about your job or something coming up and you're stressed about it. Once again, easy deep breaths and you're gonna fall asleep just like that. I'm like, honestly, let's go a, bit, a little bit more into deep breathing because deep breathing is unbelievably important in helping you not only go to bed earlier and relaxing your mind, but here's a little trick. When you are at work, if you, or if you're at school and you did have a rough night's sleep and you didn't get that much sleep, you got like five or six hours of sleep and you're still kind of feeling really tired and groggy and your eyes not opening and you're having brain fog and spacing out and everything, another deep breath. A few deep breaths of just genuine oxygen, like perk your back up. And then kind of like push your shoulder blades back a bit so your chest is exposed. You're going to kind of see my nipples right here, but that's okay. And then have it so that when you're breathing in, your shoulders is slumping up and your belly's moving out. You know, look like that blueberry girl from Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, okay? Genuinely make yourself bloat up like three to five times and you will feel your endocrine system kind of kick online after doing that, and you're gonna to start to feel a lot more awake because a lot of us aren't really breathing all that well and we're not taking in enough oxygen. Oxygen is a super power to have when you're actually breathing in enough of it, but when you're not breathing in enough of it, of course you're gonna feel like you're not awake. So when you do breathe in more oxygen and you take in bigger breaths to the point to where you feel like you're breathing into your neck, like your neck is filled with air, that's when you have a good breath. I really hope that if you have a caffeine addiction like I did, even if you don't think you do, even if you don't think you do, consider keeping track of how much caffeine you drink in a week. Divide that by the number of days, and that's your daily intake. If it's anywhere near 400, you are going way too hard on the caffeine, my friend, and you definitely need to tone it back. Now, I'm not saying that you never need to drink caffeine again, just like I've said several times throughout this video. I still drink pre-workout before I go to the gym. And then I understand there may be a day for like new parents out there who have like newborn babies who are being woken up several times throughout the night because of situations outside of their control. I think caffeine in those situations is okay too, but I really highly encourage you that unless you're genuinely feeling dead in the water and you can't perform, avoid caffeine in the morning. Just take super deep breaths in the morning. Try going to bed a little bit earlier. Try going, like if you do wake up in the middle of the night, just try deep breathing to calm yourself down and then go back to sleep in an instant. And if you did find this video informative and helpful and insightful, I need you to do me a favor and share it with other people that you think need to hear this message. Also like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this, where I talk about getting your life together, your relationships together, and your best life together. You have a great day, okay? Take care of yourself and lay off the caffeine, man.